to say all that? Fast and pray and seek God? Hey, like, like Diane's son, he didn't have to be my friend. In a way, he had to, he's got to be your friend. If you got that commitment with God like that, Amen. God, he's obligated to you. But if you don't, he's not obligated. You want to go to pray? Our dad would get sick. He's not, he's not obligated to move. Will he move? Maybe. Will God somebody else touch him for you? Maybe. Maybe you run across somebody who has got a real commitment in their life. Maybe they get a hold of him. But is that a chance you want to take? That's the chance I was taking it one time. Bless him. It wasn't a good feeling to have to depend on other people's commitment in their life. You're right. To be able to stand up for my daddy, my daddy's life. I thank God for church people like Billy. Uh, I got a lot of respect for you, man. I know we don't talk a whole lot, and in the beginning we probably didn't see eye to eye on a few things. And, uh, i tell you what, man, I got a lot of respect for you. This Billy over here, I got a lot of respect for him. He was there. He loved the church. When At one time, I didn't, I didn't care. You know, I, I was living for me. Uh, I, anybody ever live for them? Yeah. I have. <laughs> I said, you know, I got, I got a divorce back in 09, and I looked at my kids, and you know, they stopped crying. At the time, BJ was like 15, 16. And I said, you know, my whole life I was married. And I told God, I said, God, I'll be back to see you one day, but right now I'm going to live for me. I deserve it. I worked, I worked hard my whole Come life. On. I didn't want everybody to ever told me to do. I was a husband. I was a dad. I said, I'm going to live a little bit. But like my mom said over here, the devil will take you further than you want to go. And let me keep you long you intend to stay. Amen. Right. And that's what it did for me. I don't know about the times in y'all's life when y'all wanted to live for y'all self. That might have worked out for y'all. But I was expecting top two years, you know. I said, if I cut for years, I'm going to live for myself a little while. I said, if I two years, I'm going to come back. I'm going to get where I need to be. Come on. But you know what? It don't work like that every time. Amen. And just by the grace of God, I'm standing here today before yeah, y'all. Uh, just being able to pivot it, not just up here. I mean, my God, that's a miracle. I know y'all sitting there looking like, what's he doing up there? <laughs> uh, and I think the same thing. You know, I was praying before church. I had my wife drop me off. Uh, after we ate dinner today, I've been here at the church ever since then. I kind of had church before y'all got here. All right. I kind of cheating on you a little bit. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I was praying and I was thinking, God, I said, God, you know, I can never compare to a lot of people in this church. I said, they are so deep in the Word. And I said, they're so much further along than I am. I said, I, I, I can't compete with that God. God spoke to me and said, you ain't got to compete with that, son. He said, when you put me first in your life, that ain't you going to be the first person that's coming to me. Amen. He said, I'm going to be with you. And he will. Amen. He said, I'm going to put the anointing on you. You know what somebody knows? What somebody knows, you know, it's good to have knowledge. It really is. I think Billy, one of the smartest men I've ever met in my life, one of them, he's a smart man. He's been around a long time. 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 <laughs> they don't say you beat for it. I don't want to sweep your head that big. <laughs> One of the smartest things I've ever and you are. I, I, I really got a lot of respect for you. Amen. But you know, being smart and being in the Word, don't get me wrong, being in the Word, we all need it's where we're going to grow. It's where God can feed us. Right. And I, I never knew it took so much time. I used to look at my daddy. I said, My God, you've been preaching for years. They've been sitting at a table. Say, what are you doing? Come on, let's play cards. Let's do something. He said, son, I got to sit here and study. I said, my God, you don't know my name. You're going to never know. <laughs> uh, but you know what he was studying for is that fresh anointing. Amen. That don't come uh, just by what you know the last year, five years ago. It's great to look back and see where you come from. And that's another thing. God stopped me in my track and I said, God, you know I can't do this on my own. I said, I'm nothing without you, God. And the ones that are, 
That's good you feel that way, but I feel like I ain't not, 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 not up here. Now, at one time, you could carry me to the club or whatever, and I was somebody when I walked up here. At least I thought I were. The devil had me fooled, thinking, you the man up in here. But you know what? Behind this pulpit, I feel like I'm the least up in here. <laughs> but you know, I swore we're going to... Where we get our, our strength from is studying and the read, reading of God and fasting. I know a lot of fun I know about fasting. But when I grew up, I watched my mama sit and fast for seven days. I wonder how long we could fast for. <laughs> what kind of commitment did it take to fast seven days? You know, I sat and thought about that as a grown person. I fasted for three days. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, my mama fasted for seven days and, and, and she fasted to play the piano. And I thank God for my parents. I feel for my parents, there's no way I would be standing here before you today. Because they had a commitment in their lives as a young person, young people. And my daddy, he, 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 he decided to go and follow God, not follow God from afar off, like a lot of us want to do. We want, we, we want, we want the blessing of God, and we want to run up there, you know, and have a revival, and we want to lift our hands up. We want all God got for us. Then we get back home, and we expect that revival to have kept us until the next church service. But I'm going to tell you, the Holy Ghost alone will not keep you. That's a big word. They will not keep you. If you got no commitment without the Holy Ghost, it will not keep you from service to service. Amen. That's true. Amen. Amen. You gotta have a commitment. God can only do so much for you. It'll even guide you. And after that, guess what? He's gonna expect out of you. He's gonna start expecting out of you.